The last time we visited the Drop Enter was when this keyboard first launched. If you recall, at the time, myself and much of the rest of the review community agreed that while this was a really intriguing keyboard at under $100, it definitely had some opportunities here. So today, we went ahead and addressed as many of them as we possibly could. Meet Disenter, a fully modified Drop Enter that looks, sounds, and feels miles better than this board ever did at stock. I would rate this project to somewhere in the range of intermediate level difficulty. You do need to have some basic soldering experience and you need to be comfortable with tearing apart a device that ultimately does have a lot of fasteners. You also need to have some basic knowledge on how to lube switches and prep stabilizers. Now as far as disassembly of this drop enter was concerned, I didn't really hit any major snags. It does require a specialty Torx head bit in order to open this. What I found that I really wasn't a huge fan of, however, was the mounting points for this uh, PCB and plate assembly are on these plastic rails that are basically glued to the inside of this case. That's not a particularly durable solution drop, and I would really like to see that change to having mounting points set directly into the mold for the case for future iterations of this keyboard. Now, in keeping with the mostly stock-ish kind of sleeper look that this keyboard's going for, we went ahead and stuck with the KS9 Gateron yellows that were originally in this board. However, they were replaced with my personal set of KS9s, which feature G-Lube on the stems and the spring, and some KBD fan switch films. The stabilizers on this were unforgivably bad at stock, but that's something that Drop's sort of been combating for a while with all of their branded keyboards. The solution here was to go with Duroc plate mount stabilizers. We went with them in black. These fit the plate significantly better, requiring next to no modification at all on the housings themselves to get them to fit. The one issue I ran into, however, there's these little manufacturing divots at the front and back of the openings where the uh, stabilizers clip in. This makes it kind of challenging to apply uh, band-aids or tape down to the board to shore up any, any looseness that you would have in your stabilizer housing. So in future revisions of this board, I would like to see that stamping taken away, if at all possible. It is also worth noting that the stabilizers were clipped and the housings were lubed with G-Lube while the wires were lubed with dielectric grease. Now for acoustics for the board, there were two mods to address. The first one was KBD Fans Plate Foam Modules. We've used this in other builds on the channel recently. It helps out tremendously, especially when you've got a steel or aluminum plate. Pulls out a lot of that ping that you get from the plate. However, to address the rest of the acoustical issues this board has, we decided to go with the Tempest Tape mod on the back of the PCB. This is basically what it sounds like. You take tape and you put it on the back of a PCB. However, we opted to use two layers of 3M medical tape instead of packing tape here. The reason for this, and this is just a working theory of mine, I have no hard evidence to prove this is what's actually happening, but I'm speculating that because the medical tape has a fuzzy texture to the surface of it, therefore giving it just that little bit more surface area, it's gonna be better at also pulling out ping from a case, as in deleting it, without the need to have a foam that takes up a tremendous amount of room. Now, this would only really apply in a situation like this where you've got a really narrow amount of room to work with, but sound off in the comments below. Am I off base with this or do I maybe have something going here? Now to give this particular board just a little bit more spice, Drop was kind enough to supply us with the Valiant colorway of their Skylight series PBT caps. These are double shot in the OEM profile with Shine Through Legends, and I have to say, the splash of black and red with the gray legends that we scavenged from our other drop enter just really sets the look of this board off. This looks sick. We also cap things off with a Hotkeys Project Raven Artisan keycap. This has the little uh, flippy top hood on it, which is uh, not functionally useful at all, but it is kind of cool that it's got two different lighting zones within the cap. The only issue I had with this cap set, however, was with the space bars. Now, as a result of having had basically three total sets of these in, I've actually found that every single one of these space bars was warped to some capacity, with the stock space bar that came with the Valiant set being completely unusable. It would not allow the space bar to return to a resting position. 
I do know how to sort of bend these back into shape and I'll do a dedicated video on that later on, but it's been a real pain in the butt getting these straight again. The space bar that's on the keyboard right now is still not 100%. It's still got a tiny bit of drag to it, but thankfully it has been fixable. And thankfully we still had uh, a black space bar that worked on like this one uh, to get this keyboard finished. And you know what, even with a tiny bit of tuning work to do with the space bar and maybe a little touch up on one or two of the other stabilizers, this board is just night and day different from the way this came out of the box. And even with this being an intermediate level project, there's really nothing overly difficult about addressing the drop enter shortcomings and making this board exactly what you want it to be. This is a very competent keyboard to mod, and what's also nice about it is there's no driver software required to use it. You can actually take this with you everywhere, provided it makes sense in your uh, everyday carry setup. Uh, and you can just plug it in and use it, and all of the functionality is built in already. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Sound off in the comments below. What do you think about this mod? What would you have done differently with it? And if you weren't gonna use the stock switches that come with the drop enter, which ones would you use instead? Anyway, we'll catch you all next time. Take it easy.